I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts. Katie Price, we're back again. We're back again to Katie Price. Who, who would have thought it? Yeah. So why were we talking about it the other day? Because you and Eamon immediately knew who I was referring to when I said something about a model. Yes. Well, Katie Price. What were I, we talking about? I can't even remember. Isn't I can't that really remember bad? Myself. But Katie Price, um, the reason I just mentioned Katie Price again was that I remember um, there was a there was a number of stories gone on that Cordelius Price, who passed away this week, that he was a relative of Katie Price, um, and she was she was asked about it, or a representative was asked about it, and she formally denied it on really? the record to one of the Irish newspapers. Yeah, how strange! How strange! What a strange that connection. connection that came up. Now, but the, having said that, they both have a similar background. Yeah, but they're both from a Romany background. Um, obviously. Price has been referred to as an Irish traveller quite a lot at times. Um, he obviously had deep connections with some members of the, the Irish travelling community, but he was of a Romany background, which uh, obviously the, the, the travelling community, the Irish travelling community and, and the Romany uh, community are often mixed in together in terms of campaigns mm. and, and representative. But he was this, he was of a slightly different background, uh, Cornelius Price. Um, Cornelius Price obviously passed away on on Sunday uh, in a Welsh hospital after spending uh, he'd been in a coma since two thousand and twenty one. Um, Cornelius Price was probably one of it's fair to say one of the most notorious gangland criminals in Ireland, one of the major the leaders of one of the major drug trafficking gangs, and uh, not uh, a very very dangerous person. Like incredibly and prominent as. For 10 years for on, on the radar of the, both the Guardi and, and the Irish media um, for a period of time. Of course, he wasn't named. And then when he was eventually, when he had convictions. But he kind of came um, from nowhere there around 2013. We know very little about his actual background, his childhood. He has this, had this accent rather, that would sort of suggest a mix of that Irish Rochdale. Yeah, I mean, he'd obviously after after fleeing Ireland, he, he was living in Rochdale, and um, he seems to have and moved had deep connections back there. So had obviously sort of come from there, or had always had either relatives or or. Yeah, and he'd he'd obviously bought property in Ireland in the two thousands, a, a big property in Gormanstown, um, and so he'd he'd spent most of his adult life in Ireland, one way or another. Um, I think uh, he had moved between the countries quite a lot. Yeah. He, sh- he came to prominence for a number of reasons. Uh, the first being that at a certain point in time in the 2000s, towards the late 2000s, he headed up a, 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 a drug trafficking gang, really, that forged connections in Dublin uh, in the, from the north side. Some of the, the people that are associated with Mr. Big, I suppose, as he's a drug trafficker based in North Dublin that, that, that we've spoken about before. Cornelius Price and ultimately what became known as the Maguire Organised Crime Gang started to dominate parts of Leinster. Mead, Loud, they became the, the major drug suppliers in that area. That became a sort of a boom time area, if if you want, and they started making a huge amount of money, uh, spreading up to sort of the northern part of Leinster. Um, they they also then, I suppose, came to the media's attention. You know, drug trafficking gangs can go under the radar, I suppose, for a long time if they are solely focused on making money, and you know maybe aren't aren't uh, c- getting involved in violence. But the Cornelius Price was a violent man, mm. and when he started committing murders and getting involved in feuds, he became far more prominent in the media. And of course, you talk about that being a boom time because the concentration of that violence would subsequently focus in on Drogheda, that town, which, as I suppose, the Irish property market became 
more and more expensive to buy somewhere, especially in Dublin. You had a huge amount of young workers moving up towards Drogheda, where they could afford houses. And it was a great commuter town because it's actually not that far from Dublin. And the population of Drogheda, now I'll be corrected, yeah. but I think it, it surged to about 100,000. Yeah, I, I mean, mean that's the size of Limerick. Yeah, it's the greater Drogheda area, I suppose, rather than the actual town itself. So you had younger people moving up there in, in the working two, people yeah, with money. In the, yeah, and in the in the nineties and the two thousands, and then they had children, and so there was a, a youngish population. Um, there was a boom in drugs across rural Ireland. Uh, so all okay, of cocaine again really is what funded these guys. It, really, it, let's be you know straight about it and the demand for it the demand for it and also the, the spread of it into parts of ireland parts of more rural rural parts of ireland and mm. particularly the towns ac- across ireland like it's no it wasn't there in the night maybe in the in the early 90s drugs recreational drugs weren't a feature in, in most towns in ireland but certainly became a massive feature so there was a, a network a gang network mm. there uh, between the Maguire gang and Cornelius Price and his associates that supplied these, that were able to supply, that had the connections, that were able to get these drugs, wholesale these drugs, and also had access to to organised crime groups in the UK as well as in Dublin. And traditionally you see a lot of the, the traveller crime gangs, be they Irish traveller or UK traveller crime gangs, they tend to have roles in supplying and, and getting goods, firearms, etc. We often see raids on, um, you know, in, in there was other gangs out on the north side of Dublin, traveller gangs that were linked in with Mr. Biggs mob and with others. And the raids would nearly always kind of bring up a load of weaponry brought in through the UK. Um, I suppose generally because of their transient nature, they're moving about, it's easier for them to store uh, that sort of... Uh, um, products and drugs and um, they can also move it about between sites in the UK and in Ireland. Am I allowed to be a li- little bit political now? Go on. Well, of course, like there, there, there's crime in all communities. There's crime yeah. in the travelling community um, and that some of that is the, the, the you know, there, there is a network of crime, a subculture within the travelling community. Like, obviously, that's not to say that it's yeah. any more prominent. I mean, most of the crime in Ireland is caused by non-travellers. Yeah. There's no statistically inevitable. But there is certain subcultures within that, and certainly the connections and the movement of people across Ireland and, and the UK is a part of that feature, and it's something that uh, Cornelius Price preyed on. And, of course, m- a lot of his... The people that suffered at his hands were the Irish travelling community even more than, mm. than others. Uh, a lot of his victims, a lot of the people that were attacked and brutalised were members of the travelling community in Ireland. So I suppose that's that's the background of him. Um, but he his his first the the first murder as such that he was believed to have been involved in or the suspect of was Benny Whitehouse, and that was to do with a kind of a power struggle over the supply of weapons and drugs to gangs. Yeah, I mean Benny Whitehouse was, was based in kind of the northern part of County Dublin, um, so it was 2014 he was shot dead. There, in the run up to that, there'd been a number of uh, violent incidents, um, and there was a lot of violence in the aftermath as well. A lot of tit for tat violence between associates of uh, Benny Whitehouse and associates of Cornelius Price. But that's really when he started to feature in the newspapers, Cornelius Price. Yeah, big time because, like from from memory at the time, like Benny Whitehouse was a significant character, and there was a bit of shock that anybody would dream of taking him on yeah and, and out and also in the manner the manner in which he was killed uh, you know was particularly horrific and um yeah there'd been there'd been a lot of a lot of uh there was a lot of build up to it um and it really was a, a play for power i think mm. by cornelius price and he did start to dominate that part of north north county dublin then into the border into mead and loud so all of that area became a hugely lucrative uh base for him to 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 sell drugs and that really shot him into the big time I think. Now in 2015 he was under investigation and he was on bail um, but he was looking to get back to his compound in 
Gormanston yeah. and County Meath where he felt safest. And always that co- that compound was described as literally a fortress because there was only one way in, a very small little roadway in and on it was, and we remember doing the aerial shots of it before I suppose we started using drones, but um, at the time you could look down and you could see there were a number of um, mobile homes. You know, there could have been, it was a large compound. There could have been, you know, 15 or 20 of these mobile homes surrounding it and then there was a difficult place to search difficult place for the cops yeah, to raid I think there was elect- electronic gates going in and out yeah it was difficult for them to know whether uh, whether Cornelius Price was there or not and also for him it was very safe because you know what sort of you'd have to send an army in to get him because he was always sort of surrounded by associates and probably had weaponry to hand and all the rest of it but he did feel safest there so he in, in the January of 2015 he seemed to have sort of faked an attempted murder attack on himself so as he could go back yeah, there yeah because his bail uh, his bail conditions he wanted his bail conditions varied so he'd go back to Gormanstown so he, he seems to have faked an attempt on his life which is bizarre but it, I suppose it shows you that this is the type of personality you were dealing with it was somebody who as you, as you would see him taunting people on social media it was somebody who thought he was clever than Mm. the cops and his rivals and uh, but he absolutely didn't care about ordered society no. or the law he really didn't didn't and he he was on bail and just back in that compound when of course the most notorious um murders connected to him and really horrific those of Willie uh, mom and Anna Ver- Versalav um they were based up on that compound and the story goes and that that they that that um, Willie mom was privy to some details of the Benny Whitehouse murder. He knew basically that it was Cornelius Price who had carried it out and who had organised it. Um, and obviously he was looking to pull away from that compound. They were looking to set up a family home themselves. They were expecting a baby. She was a girl from Eastern Europe, a young girl. And Willie mom's family were hoping that they would you know, basically set up a home together and, you know, enjoy a family life. But unfortunately, um, they never left that compound. No. So I think what we hear about what was going on in the compound was that people were being invited in to stay there. Um, You know, they could be considered vulnerable people in part, um, some of them have been convicted and they've been described in court as gophers who were living there. And basically Cornelius Price was bringing in these people who maybe had debts or who maybe were addiction problems, putting them in uh, mobile homes on the site, bullying them, mm. forcing them to commit crimes, um, you know, almost like... A, Working them like slaves almost. Almost like slaves. Mm. And these people were people maybe, and they're not actually speaking about that couple but other people that maybe had addiction problems you'd feed them a bit of drugs get them to store weapons bring drugs around like quite kind of sinister stuff you know beyond the normal you know obviously he's a criminal committing murders so but this was kind of a Mm. a sort of uh, having people in there almost as slave labour and probably playing with people really playing with people and then obviously the the in order to keep them quiet because vulnerable people are in risk of speaking, uh, which has been shown again and again, he would have had to commit violence on, see him commit violence on people in order to put, to scare people. So he seems to have tormented uh, uh, Willie Mon and ultimately, you know, we'll never know. Obviously no bodies have ever been found. The compound has been searched a number of times. Willie Mon's family have spoken about how they believe Obviously, he is dead, but they haven't been able to get that uh, uh, closure. Yeah, there is a story, obviously a horrific story that they were um, both murdered um, and Cornelius Price was either present or carried out those murders and that their remains were burned, cremated on the compound. Um, To me, it sounds like, I mean, people talk about Cornelius and we're freer, of course, now to talk about him because he has passed away. But um, 
like people constantly talk about and use words like evil and psychopath and all the rest of it. Like, was he really genuinely worried that Willie Mom uh, and his girlfriend Anna were going to go to police and give them the details that would have see him jailed for life for the murder of Benny Whitehouse? <laughs> Or was he somebody who up in that weird compound in the dark of night with fires going, carried out violence for fun? Well, we, I mean, we can't know. Uh, there is, I suppose, a point to that type of violence in that it puts the fear in everybody else. Also remember Willie Mon, even after he was killed, Cornelius Price was ordering uh, the Mon family to be tormented by his, the by grave his foot and shoulders. Everything. Yeah, graves smashed up. So like So he had a kind of he obviously had some personal gripe with well, William. There's Mom, a motive I think for, for putting fear in people mm. because you're getting people to commit crimes for you and you put the fear in them that if anything goes wrong that their lives are gonna be in danger. So that's the point of it. But there has to be you know, to kill a pregnant woman yeah. I mean how how I mean, uncommon seriously. is that yeah. you know, like yeah. we talk about the Kinning cartel and people like that. I mean, they're not going around chopping up in a mm. pregnant women. You know, um, this is a whole other level of sort of like quite savage. And you also know? that kind of way of, you know, I'll kill you and your family will never get your bodies back. Yeah. Is that same sense of that cruelty of the disappeared by the IRA? Yeah. That that fear that they, um, you know, put into entire communities that. Yeah thoughts that you were going to be killed and your family were going to be tormented for the rest of their days yeah, yeah and never let and it'll never be let go or normal and never given peace <coughs> and also i think there's a you know some people are very deeply spiritual and religious and and that sense of you know burial and finality and and that sense of that christian burial is really important in some cultures yes and of course, remember the Mon family have been really courageous and continued to speak yeah, about have. Cornelius Price. I mean, that is not an easy road that they've taken, but mm. it's been a courageous road in 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 the sense that it is very very hard for ordinary people to speak up. Um, and it they was his brother's grave that was dug up at Bornebrina Cemetery yeah. in the August of twenty sixteen. But it hasn't su- silenced Mon's them. Brother. In fairness. The, the parents of no they've been very brave to speak out about him because he's one he was one scary yeah guy like I mean there's no question about it Um, he was in prison along with Robbie Lawler who became his arch rival and um, Price was in prison because he had driven at speed at a Garda and I think he got about three years now while he was off the streets an individual like that who's so dangerous and so feared getting him off the streets, even for a short sentence, can actually be a very useful tool to Gardaí because it gives everybody a break when they're off the streets. But unfortunately, uh, Price took his war into the prison system because him and Owen Maguire had joined forces. Maguire had been shot and survived at this Drogheda feud. This fight ultimately for control of Drogheda had kicked off and while he was in the system, Robbie Lawler was, he was targeting Robbie Lawler. Yeah. Now, Richie Carberry, Robbie Lawler's brother-in-law, as we know, was killed in the 2019. And Cornelius Price came out of the prison system just before Robbie Lawler. And I think everybody, Gardy working the area, there was bulletins put out. This really was a bad, bad situation with the two of them free. Yeah. And of course, when Cornelius Price uh, got out of prison, the Drogheda feud, which up until then had actually had a series of non-fatal but very serious shootings, um, almost within a short space of time, uh, Keith Brannigan was shot dead in 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 the Drogheda area. Keith Brannigan had been uh, an associate of the anti Maguire faction, but was was regarded as a soft target. Mm. He known those people. He wasn't a criminal of a serious nature he'd been pally with these the anti Maguire faction and he was shot dead and that was I think linked to to Cornelius Price and maybe using some of his connections I mean some mm. of the people who are suspected of carrying out that murder are from uh, the North Dublin area um, and wouldn't have been uh, and it would have been come to believe that Cornelius Price had a role in that if not certainly not a direct role so it was in that in the aftermath of these things and the murder of uh, Richard Carberry 
um, the, 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 the murder of Keen Mulready Woods took place. Mm. Robbie Lawler obviously is the man who is believed to have killed Keen Mulready Named Woods. Named in who court. Was, yeah, mm. and who was a teenager at the time. Um, he obviously had help from some people, including Paul Crosby, who's now serving a sentence for that murder. So what what we hear, and it's written by Ken Foy, details some of it today in in um, in for for the Sunday World and for the Irish Independent, how Robbie Lawler, um, when he had uh, chopped up Keen Mulready's body, he attempted to bring the head up to Cornelius Price's compound. He was going to leave it at the gated door. Now he eventually pulled out of that because there was believed to be police on the scene but Ken describes how he was you know that's that's what they believe was about to happen and all of that was like like Cornelius Price Robbie Lawler was somebody that had that psychopathic edge and this was a, a an attempt to show whatever you can do I can do, I can do something better, even yeah. more horrific mm. and 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 scary and that was what was so dangerous about that feud those those couple of people involved that were yeah. genuinely unhinged, I think, and capable of that kind of extreme violence that isn't even common in, in gangland. And from memory, uh, Price had been protecting Owen Maguire, the word was, when Owen Maguire had spent a long period of time in hospital after he was shot. Uh, he wouldn't leave hospital, actually, because he knew he was secure there. And obviously, the hospital staff were feeling very not secure with, yeah. with him there in case somebody came to finish him off but um, he eventually did leave the hospital and the word was that he was brought up to uh, Price's compound to yeah. for protection Yeah. Um, so I suppose in Robbie Lawler doing what he was doing he was leaving that head of yeah. Ian Mulready Woods for both of them his yeah. two arch rivals to show them what he could do now Robbie Lawler subsequently went to hiding in um, the north in Belfast and Price moved to Rochdale which we think he was doing all the time anyway whenever a bit of heat came on him or whenever there was a little bit of you know I don't think he probably is an individual who could have felt fear but certainly he could have felt self-preservation and knew it was safer to get out of um, the Gormanstown area at times but he was in Rochdale and Robbie Lawler was in in Belfast and Robbie Lawler of course was shot dead in April 2020 in Ardoyne housing estate Um, now in the immediate aftermath of that there was quite a lot of activity on social media and in particular Cornelius Price posted a very um, sinister video yeah I mean he put it's um, put a video of him having a drink I think it's fair to say to celebrate the death of Robbie Lawler though he 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 couched his words quite carefully and said cheers to Robbie Lawler rest in peace (laughs) And then suggested maybe he wouldn't be resting in peace. Mm. Um, so look, I mean that's put out there to to show. It's again a kind of a uh, laying know, down a marker that I did this. It's you peacocking know. though as yeah. well. You know what I mean? That yeah. and and also a sign of just how little regard he has for any authorities or law. Or they yeah. just they operate just on a completely different plane, a different world. But four months after that, um, he and then Limerick criminal Gerard Dundon and others were caught in the middle of this kidnap attempt and uh, that was a kind of a finally you know you felt finally Cornelius yeah. Price had been caught hands on doing something very serious or so it looked and he was um, obviously had been under surveillance by Sa- Staffordshire police when he'd done it obviously his links to Gerard Dundon at the time were very significant because of what had gone on in during the murder of Robbie Lawler, it showed a seriously kind of it, it just showed the, this double cross, which we won't go into because that's very no. complex. Um, but Price was jailed along with others and he was facing charges in relation to the kidnap when 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 bizarrely, because this just doesn't happen to very many of these guys, he became ill and uh, very ill, terminally ill. Yeah. So, I mean, we don't know the full background and the medical details of what exactly led to this, uh, him falling into a coma. Um, There was talk of, you know, maybe addiction issues, drugs, but who knows? All we know is that from from late to 2021, 
Uh, he went into a coma. He never recovered, never seemed to have gained consciousness as far as we know, and spent the rest of his life in a Welsh hospital until um, until this weekend. There was, as far as we know, that his family came over, seemed to have known that, that his, his, his time had arrived. Um, and He was never expected to recover from this because I remember speaking to Ken Foy at the very beginning, at the very offset of it, and the illness that, uh, uh, and it was the Gardaí, of course, had been informed of this, but the illness that he, he was diagnosed with was a terminal one. He wasn't yeah. ever expected to wake up from this coma and he was just going to remain on life support, I yeah. suppose, until things change for him. Um, but yes, it's called limbic encephalitis. Um, yeah. And he had that since October 2021 with little hope of recovery. So that kidnap trial went ahead and uh, a number of people were uh, found not guilty. Jared uh, Dundon was found guilty in relation to his role in it. And that's only been in the last couple of weeks. But of course, this weekend, price passes away. Now, I was asking you before we came on, was there any social media activity around this and what were people saying? I know certainly the mom family have come out and they have um, released videos and they are, of course, I'm sure they have mixed emotions about it in one way. I mean, this is a very evil individual who's brought nothing but heartache to them, who's murdered and uh, hidden the body of their son and his girlfriend and who's left them basically with a lifetime of questions and no closure to that. Um, but at the same time, he's sort of taking with him to his grave what he knows. He takes with him what he knows and they're, yeah, it's they don't get to hear what happened in a court case, which can be, yeah. you know, cathartic for some families, I suppose, um, even though it's a difficult process. Yeah, so, I mean, it's... And if there's any remains, obviously, he ain't going to... I mean, I'm sure no matter what, you still think, you know, if he wakes up from this, if he's had this big brush with death himself, maybe he'll change and yeah, give that up. But I think anybody yeah, who knows so him wouldn't have thought. No, but there was there was interesting, uh, you know, there's always debates on social media about these these yeah. guys. Nelly Boy, as he's caught, as he was known. Nelly uh, Boy. Nelly Boy, as he was known. Uh, Cornelius Nelly. Yeah. But that's what he was known yeah. and, and genuinely known as that. Um, but there was, obviously, he seems some of his uh, extended family and supporters have put up a lot, actually, in the last couple of days about how he was a, he, he uh, became a born again Christian as he lay dying, um, that his sins were forgiven through a sort of uh, by an evangelical preacher. Um, there was a good bit of that stuff, actually. So, sorry, he was in a coma and non-conscious, but he had become a born-again Christian Well, in that state? Well, it, yeah. Do you know a lot about evangelical Christianity? I, I have to admit that I don't, but that seems to be a lot of what's gone up, whether he, he you know... And There's that's a lot of preaching the, and shouting involved in, in some of it, I yes, have to say. Yes, yes. So um, but, look, they've obviously... He's had this conversion while yes, in a coma. Yes, yes, yes. Um, I, I said I said to you earlier there there's a lot of kind of certain cultures that are very spiritual and yeah. uh, religious even though there's a disconnect with certain activities and then you know what yeah, well, I religious suppose, should uh, be but uh, Jesus Christ did say bring the sinners onto me and all that so he was certainly a sinner and I'll uh, just read you out a couple of the quotes you took from Facebook about yeah. in relation to him and these are the his obviously his fans. Uh, R.I.P. to a legend that no man in this world would fill his shoes. He was a brother I never had, always had my back. The man is a legend and is gone as a legend. Until we meet again, I love you. What are my heart? My heart is broken over you and I'll see you again. You are a king in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, look. Each to their own, eh? Each um, and obviously there's a lot of um, people who have the exact opposite to say. Yeah, I mean, obviously the Mo the Mon family and people that that would have known Willie Mon, they're, you know, maybe from s they're leaving a very different perspective yeah. about the heartache that that. And it seems caused. to me that he wasn't liked in pretty much most communities. No, no I don't think what, he, I don't think there your was, background. I don't think there's a lot of uh, illusions about what he was. He was one of those one of these guys who rise quickly to the top in in, in organized crime 
through more brutality than brains, I think. Um, maybe not dissimilar to the Dundons that we spoke about last week. They use fear, intimidation and violence uh, to really get their way. They are maybe a slightly different breed than some of the other criminals who really want to make money and stay out of out of the limelight. These guys embrace some parts of the limelight and social media, and it's true fear that they that they rise to the top. And I mean, that's a feature in, uh, but it tends to be these are short-lived criminal lives. Obviously, uh, Cornelius Price died of medical complications, but these are the guys that don't last one way or another. Mm. Do you think some people are born bad? I don't necessarily think that. Um, I don't. I don't think that they are. But I think there's some people that, by the by, a certain age, you can see that these people are very, very dangerous. And mm. I think there's some damage is caused to these people to make them like that. I don't think they're born bad. Mm. I don't know how if that could be. Uh, you know, if 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 you catch these people as teenagers, can it be arrested or? Is there another route that they could be gone down? But I do think that people like Cornelius Price, they spread a lot of misery. Like we've spoken, obviously, about the murders and they leave a a never-ending heartbreak. But there was a lot of that that gang, a lot of what they did was kind of a low-level intimidation around drug deaths, uh, using extreme violence. And it was very, very destructive and damaging to a lot of people. So you're talking about the ripple effects of somebody like that. You're not just talking about four, maybe five murders. You're talking about hundreds and hundreds of people whose lives have been negatively affected directly by his by his actions. And what about, I mean, we only spoke last week or the week before about Paul Crosby, who was once part of that gang and who was so badly treated within it and bullied and, you know, yeah. even though he was an underling there, he was obviously a young, vulnerable boy at one point in his life and was brought into that gang and was treated in such a way that you know you can't possibly say that it didn't have anything to do with what he no. went on to do no I think there's a, a, a cycles of brutality we don't know as you said there. we don't know what happened to Cornelius Price uh, mm. as a young man himself but he certainly uh, you know he certainly created a m- personally could be accused of creating a violent circumstances in in, a, in communities that didn't maybe have that tradition. Mm. You know, maybe though as well, um, while I would say the majority of people are moulded by their upbringings and, you know, what happens to them, I think some people can be just, you know, a bad egg. I do think that exists. Yeah, it's, it's an age old debate of nature versus nurture, mm. isn't it? And mm. uh, Possibly won't be solved on crime world. It might though. It might. You never it know. might. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, look. No, he but was, it is. He was it a is. buddy. He was a big buddy. He, yeah. I mean, look. And no matter it's what. It's quite extraordinary. I I think just to to see a guy like that with that kind of a career die from essentially natural causes. Yeah. We're usually talking about them because they've either either been you know they've been shot dead or they've been jailed. Yeah. For it's, life it's for something the they've been caught. And of course, no matter what happened to somebody's background, when you become an adult, you take you're responsible for your actions even if that's an explanation for why people do what they do like Paul Crosby what they did they're still responsible for it and it does it's not an excuse Mm. it may be an explanation but it's never an excuse absolutely okay Niall thank you thank you Nicola